Hello guys and welcome to a new Stud Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 1 vs 1 on Brest West and I'm going to be playing with the 7th Mechanized Corps with the Maverick deployment type on the Allied side. I'm going to be up against Alot in this one who is going to be playing with the 2nd Panzerlosch with the Maverick deployment type on the Axis side. And this is game one of two games in the group stage of the Still Division League, Season 10, Division 2. Now, so far, just a spoiler alert, if you guys want to go check out the previous games, definitely go and do that. But with that said, I am currently 0-4 down in the group stage, which was not where I wanted to be necessarily, but I wasn't surprised necessarily to be there due to my lack of preparation uh, for the league and the quality of players that I'd been playing against. So going into this, it didn't really matter if I won or lost, but I still kind of wanted to redeem myself in the league uh, against Alot. And Alot had also been 0-4 at this point, so we're kind of both fighting not to be last. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. Anyway, as you can see, the game is underway. I'm going to be dropping off my Ognemichiki further up. I've got a P40 out at the start. Bringing out the Focke-Wolf 189 is very, very common for the second Panzerlosch at the start. But he was doing a good job of microing that so I couldn't get my P40 on the back. My P40 was doing an absolutely terrible job of uh, shooting that down and having the agility to kill it. And I wanted to try and get on the back of it, but BF-109, much faster, decent firepower, rips the P-40 out of the sky after it gets hit by a bit of AA. So, off to not a great start. Nice little play here, though. My Flamer squad, I smoked behind the machine gun, so I could engage the machine gun without the second machine gun shooting me. So that was a nice little play there. Uh, on the left-hand side, I'm in a good position, managed to get all the way down. Unfortunately, my T-3476 took a penetration, but otherwise, we're all good. On the SU, the SU-122 on the right-hand side is here to pretty much protect uh, this flank against 2,000 meter range pushes of any infantry towards this flamer early on. But the Focke-Wolf 189 is going to spot that and also spot the SG-43. I was trying to kind of move into a better position to avoid being spotted by that, but it was kind of inevitable in the end. Flamer's going to end up bumping into some Mod Akasok. And the Modlov is going to be engaging my Flamer from the side, which is a little bit unfortunate. Going to be trying to smoke off the left side so that I can continue that engagement without taking the MG fire, but a bit too late, unfortunately. Let me just uh, talk about the picks. I actually picked second, so Alot picked Panzerlosch first, and then I picked the 7th mech into Panzerlosch. I felt like the 7th mech had a good all-round battle group for this map. It's got some decent close range options with the Serpari, with the uh, Ognemichiki, with the Tankos. Also has Storaki SVTs, it's got T-34s, so it can fight that sort of close to medium range relatively well. And it also has options for his Panthers in the form of the ISU-122s. So that was kind of my overall thinking going in. We've also got some relatively strong off-map that comes in with a KV-1, which is cool. And we've got adequate AA to deal with uh, the annoying focke Wolf 189s. Now bringing AA at the start is just something you don't really often do in a 1 versus 1. In this case I opted for the fighter to push off his Focke Wolf 189, obviously that didn't work out very well for me. Uh, so now I am bringing in the 37mm, you can see that it's actually coming in with the ZIS-42. <laughs> a little bit of a deck building mistake on my part, picking the wrong transport because it auto defaults to the ZIS-42 rather than a Stuttbecker or something a bit faster. Uh, but I am going to be bringing that in to cover my left side more specifically because I don't want this infantry to get bombed out by the recon uh, aircraft or the or be strafed, I guess, by the BF-109 that we've already seen. So 37mm AA coming in early on. I know a lot of you guys have been complaining in the comments of my league games about me not bringing in enough AA, but I don't think enough of you really understand how AA is in 1v1. It's not something you can invest too much into, because, say if I put 80 points of AA here and then they just bomb on the other side of the map, that's 80 points of AA that's completely useless, for example. Uh, and in this case, he scouted out my flame earlier, so he's just able to get a cheeky bombing strike in there with the BF-109, and my 37mm AA wasn't in position in time. So you end up having to like invest way more 
in your AA than is effective. So you've got to kind of pick and choose carefully. In this case, what I opted to do was use my commander to buff my infantry, also give me a three vet AA to cover the left side. And then I've got the AA on the right side here that I'll probably try and get in, or was thinking about getting in a leader for later on. So we can have that, a three vet. Then I don't need as many because at higher veterancy, they're going to be more effective. Anyway, his infantry, not as good as mine. Uh, the Sapodi can be pretty good against like Modloves in this situation. The Modloves weapons aren't that good, so I'm going to be using the Sapodi here to engage those. We get the pin there, and I'm going to be trying to move forward so that we can avoid the Turans coming in here. Now, Turans wasn't something that I expected. I don't know why. I just have I'm not really familiar playing against the uh, Pantelos in 1v1. Like, I know about the recon aircraft thing because people do it even in team games. But in 1v1, I really didn't expect to see the Turan 1s. Like, as a team game player, Turan 1s are really not seen very much at all because they get outclassed by heavier tanks and in a team game, like, medium tanks are usually all you need to kill them. So in this case, I'm pretty confident I'm going to ride up with my T-34-76 and I'm going to try and kill off the Turan at close range. Now, you've got to bear in mind that this is a T-34-76-1943 technically because it only has the 75 miles of frontal armor, but he's still not quite got the penetration, but alas, <laughs> gets one shot. Now, at the time, I was a little bit confused as to why I got one shot, but it was because I had already been penetrated on the hill and forgot. So that was not ideal now my su-122 going to be fired up by the same unit that penetrated my t-34 and it is indeed one of the annoying 75 mil 30 point guns from the hungarians and with its heat round manages to kill my su-122 very very quickly indeed a very frustrating loss at the start so please Oktemachiki is going to be moving through trying to clean out more infantry, but he's now reinforcing more infantry on his side. So this is going to be a little bit of a drawn out battle here. But I'm thinking if I bring up T-34-76-1942s with 90 millimeters of frontal armor, those Turans won't be a problem. And you can see that my AA happily taking out his Fock Wolf, or at least, you know, forcing it off for the time being with the help of the 50 cows and all the leadership there. Not able to kill it. Uh, which is a bit unfortunate. Usually like a 37 would be able to kill them, but I guess it didn't really come close enough. Regardless, uh, I do lose 14 to 10 in flags early on, uh, mainly due to losing this flag where my flamer was, and also I think technically this flag starts on my side of the map, so I'm going to want to try and take that back. But my artillery, or their artillery, sorry, already coming in and hitting my 37. The Panselosh does get some pretty good artillery early on and so he's going to be utilizing that to try and harass my early investment in AA and again this is another reason that AA is not really invested in too much in 1v1s because it can be punished quite severely uh, if you do end up over investing in it and he is trying to do that now with the investment in his artillery which could then take out my AA open up the skies for his bombers but also open up his artillery after the fact to then hit my main front line forces now the Turan in this case managed to sneak forwards get the AT grenade off so that was really good but check this out I was really really frustrated by this one the mod Loves gets a double bazooka kill Really, really rough. Those two T-34-76-1942s that I brought in to kill off the Turans in the close cover get zooked because my Sapoli had ran in here, but somehow he'd managed to like sneak around the Sapoli, or maybe like it was the unit that was on the right that I hadn't killed. It managed to get all the way back around here. And, uh, the ambush there was just really, really rough. Really, really rough indeed. And I was just like, oh... That sucks real bad. Like, <laughs> that is like game changing <laughs> for real. Because now the Turans are pretty much free to do what they want. My infantry is unsupported. It just really, really threw me off on this left side. Thankfully, I have a bunch of Straki DP coming in. So, hoping that with a bit of veterancy from the Abto Komnoti, especially at 3 vet, the PTRD can at least kill the Turans for me. I've also brought in a mortar that's going to start harassing the AT gun to push that out of position. 37 uh, is going to try and kill the BF-109 but you can see that Alot is just bombing wherever I don't have AA 
And this is why AA is such a bad investment in 1v1. It, again, I'm going to keep bringing this up because look, so many people comment about this and it is uh, something that I think people don't appreciate. But yeah, if I buy AA here, I buy AA here, you'd think that would cover the whole map, but it doesn't. He can just get free kills by bombing in the middle now. And I've spent 160 point on, on AA, that's not going to kill anything. So it's, it's like a useless investment against a good player. Like, I'm better off using fighters, but in this case I'm not going to invest in fighters because he has Nimrods. And Nimrods are some of the best motorized AA in the game. So it's kind of pointless for me to try and chase down a BF-109 with a P-40 uh, in this situation. So I've just got to play around the ground. I, I, like, the AA is going to be in positions where I want to push to cover it from these bombing strikes and then he's just gonna try and pick me off elsewhere so he managed to take out an sg43 in this case we have managed to make some decent ground here i've got the su76 coming in to engage the uh, turan one and on the left you can see that the stalker dps now have the three vet looking for penetrations onto the turan two at this range they've got like a 30 percent penetration or something i think it was and they've got to land like five Five, five penetrations I think it is because I think a Turan 2 has 10 health or 8 health maybe it needs 4 penetrations regardless we're going to be bouncing a lot uh, because of the armor there but I'm able to get quite a few shots in before I have to fall back and I've got like, quite a decent amount of damage resistance because of the leadership so that's good I've got a couple more T-34-76 coming in. I know that he's got a bunch of infantry here. I've managed to push through on the left side, so I'm thinking I can bring my T-34-76s round on the left to engage his Torans that way instead. Now he is going to be able to bring in recon up here, but as you can see, <laughs> I get zooked again. And I was just like, come on. I can't, like, I can't believe it. Like, I actually can't believe it at this point. So, yeah, it was frustrating. Because I've got recon up here. So I can kind of, like, see if there's units coming down. I've got recon here. But I, it's really difficult for me to see into the tree lines. Maybe if I had recon here, I might have spotted that. But it's just, it was so finicky. It really, really was. Anyway, in the mid, SU-76 manages to kill a transport before it unloads, which is pretty nice. But unfortunately, going to get killed by uh, the enemy unit there. Stalky, SVT are going to try and move up and catch that unit in the open before it gets to the heavy cover. But, yeah, not ideal so far. My, uh, all of my medium tanks have just been ruined. Uh, the 75mm gun here has got infinite value. Like, for a 30-point unit, it's already killed... Or helped kill a T-34-76 Rajodka. It killed the SU-122. It just killed my AT gun there. Um, really, really tough for me to deal with. And this Focke Wolf 189 just was not getting shot down by the 37 every time it came in. Uh, so maybe I could have invested in a second 37 here. And uh, like kind of doubled down on the AA to make sure that that wasn't a problem. But... In this case, I still believe that it's better for me to just invest into infantry to push through here in time. The bombing strike does manage to just get through. So yeah, that would be like maybe a reason to get a second 37 potentially. Anyway, Soki DP. Going to be able to hopefully kill off the Modulo base. I'm just trying to push it out of this position. You can see my mortifier worked out really, really well. That helped a lot in uh, clearing this forest section out. We managed to get surrenders and all that good stuff. He's now brought in off-map though, the 105 off-map. Not too concerned about it. Meanwhile, I have made a little push in here. Double tanker Desaniki moving in to surrender uh, the Mod Akosak. But uh, artillery gets a direct hit onto my 37 and kills that off, so I'm gonna have to replace it anyway. Oh, I'll bring in a second one anyway. <laughs> Which is, uh, again, <laughs> not ideal. So Starker DP looking for more PTRD shots. Couldn't even get inside armor that time around. Uh, Mortify it going off once again. So I've got Starker DP now coming in to back up the tankos here. I was thinking I've managed to more or less secure the tree line here. There's just the Turan that I've got to get rid of and then we're okay. So if I can control this flag, that's great. I'm not going to push up the hill. That's a waste of time. I've managed to take back my flag here. So the flags that I can get from here on is pretty much like this flag, maybe this flag. And I was thinking, you know, I can recover maybe a flag on the right because I do have the SU-122 kind of waiting here to be used. 
I've got the dinosaur in the in the church that can kind of scout for me, so that's okay. Stalky DP finally takes out the Turan 1. Off map now coming down is a little bit annoying, but not going to do too much damage. The 105, not really there to damage, more just there to suppress. And then that allows his infantry to get back in uh, whilst my units are falling back or pinned down. Now a little bit of mistake on my part. Delayed on moving the 82mm mortars, didn't give them a shift move order after they fired and two shots directly hit two of my 82mm mortars, so yeah. <laughs> you can kind of see where this is going, like it's like it's it's really just no surprise at this point what the outcome is likely to be in this game uh, because of just the sheer amount of, I wouldn't even call it bad luck, I would just call it bad play on my part um, and good play on his part. <laughs> So now I'm going to crutch on off map. I'm bringing in the KV-1E and we're going to try and off map all of that infantry that just came in. So we saw the four units of infantry come down here. They're going to amass in this tree line, uh, or at least that's what I thought, and then push to this one and try and push through. But he ends up moving more to the left here and starts attacking my Straki uh, DP. But I'm going to let this come down and then I'm going to try and push forward as Straki DP to uh, take that area. In this case, Sapari, going to find myself a Feldali Toriaron. Uh, on this side, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to attack, move towards his town and see if he's actually got it defended properly. He did have a Shvalo as a hit there. He's got the Toran 1 coming over that we can see thanks to the Dorsor and the uh, BA-64, although BA-64 currently just too deep in cover. Anyway, Sapari here, moving up, finding myself two MG-34s. I'm not going to unload the Sapoli on purpose, I'm just going to let it shoot the MGs. If I unload, that allows them to shoot me, so why would I do that? Uh, on this side, they're just getting pinned and I'm not even noticing. Meanwhile, off map has come down, hasn't done too much damage, but we managed to get the uh, Mot Akasok uh, pinned there. I'm falling back on my Shocker DP because I know that the off map's coming in. Ideally, what might have been a good idea is to cancel this off map uh, because it's not in the best of positions if I already have like the enemy pinned down. Actually that must have been the first one. I think I cancelled maybe the first strike. Now you can cancel off map if you guys want to know by actually left clicking in the bottom left here and what will happen is the option will come up on the right as if you have like the off map vehicle selected and you can click stop but you have to click in the bottom left first on the actual name and then you click on the right and click stop. That will stop the off map strike from coming in. It's really, really useful to know. Anyway, two Tankos versus three Mot Akasok. Unfortunately, whilst my Tankos do beat the Mot Akasok one to one, when there's like a 3v2 uh, two there, they manage to kill both my Tankos. I don't even kill a single unit of his Mot Akasok. Also, my Sapori that pushed in here ends up losing out to his Mot Akasok. And my T-34 died to the, T to, to the Tiger. So yeah, this is, this is absolutely brutal at this point. It really, really is. But hey, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep trying uh, to maybe work my way back into this one. <laughs> but it was, it was rough. It was rough. Uh, I feel like a lot knew what he was doing with this division. And... I think it's actually deemed to be a relatively strong division at the moment, so maybe I should have banned it, but um, not too familiar with it, as I mentioned before, in 1v1. I thought I would be able to deal with it because I've dealt with it in team games, uh, but the requirement between team games and 1v1 is so different. It really, really is. Um, the meta is just completely different. I still I'll keep going to be moving across. I've got to try and clean this out so that he doesn't have pressure on this flag. I've got to cut off that salient, basically. So it's forcing me to move across. I'm dodging artillery all over the place. The SU-122, I brought it in. It did manage to one-shot kill his panther, at least, up on the hill. So that was good. I utilized the um, decent-ish accuracy of this ISU-122. It's got like 40%, which is higher than the other one. Like the 122S has like 5% more accuracy than normal 122. Anyway, I managed to get the Motakosok killed, which is good. And Stalky DP engaging his Motakosok at range. Uh, we're not going to do too badly, although the Motakosok do come with an MG42. So they are pretty 
hard to deal with at range. Thankfully, we have double machine gun advantage over his single machine gun. So that's the, the reason that we can actually make things work in this case. Actually, no, that was the second off-map strike on the left, sorry, because I brought in... Did I bring in another one? Yeah, I brought in another one. Oh, no, that would be later on. Never mind. Uh, yeah, so we've used two off-map strikes on the left. I use one here, and I use one here. Uh, and then this one's coming in on the right, because I'm thinking of off-mapping here, so that we can delete any infantry squads and stuff in this position, and I can place an, another infantry squad in position on these buildings with the support of the SU-122. So you can see my Stroke DP trying to push up right now, and yeah, the idea was just to break these two flags uh, so that I could take those under my control. Uh, we're into Phase C now, so both of us have had our full Phase B Maverick income, and things you know, aren't completely out of control. You know, I've been bleeding a plus one, uh, but it's more the kills and losses that are adding up right now. Whenever you play a game in 1v1 where both of you are using exactly the same income, it's so much more, like, important than in team games because the amount of units on the map really adds up. Like, if we were to check this from his perspective right now, he would have way, mo way more. And actually, you know what? Why don't we do that? Because it's not like you guys don't know the outcome at this point. So we'll start watching it from both point of view. And you can see that his amount of units on the map is, like, crazy more than mine because he's been trading so much better throughout. If you consider that I've lost, like, three medium tanks, I've lost... Uh, the AA here, we lost a bunch of other stuff as well. There's not really many options for me. Like, he's got it all covered off. Like, the top side is the only side that's weak for him because I've been putting on a ton of pressure here and I've been controlling this flag. So he's, like, constantly throwing an infantry here and I'm trading well with the infantry. Like, maybe investing in the T-3476 was unnecessary, but I didn't really have, like, any launches like Panzerfaust or Panzertrex that I can use to kill his Turans at close range. And he knows that, which is why I invested into all of the Straki DP after the T-34s failed, because PTRDs are my only real way to kill Turans otherwise at close range. Like, I wanted the T-34s, 9042s to do their job, and if they had done their job, it would have been fine. But um, him utilizing the Modlovace 44M, which have the bazookas, it made it incredibly difficult and caught me out completely. Uh, again, the 75 mm gun doing a great job killing the SU-76 there. Godan 2 going to be able to kill my 45. My 45 uh, bounces off the front of this um, and uh, will get killed off. The first shot bounced, the second shot missed. And with the help of the MG-34 and the 75 mm it's just going to get killed. Now the SU-122 here moving into a position to try and support a push towards this location. Yeah, this off-map was intended to go right here on top of Vistug and the Langsodoshuk and the Motlovis. The SU-122 does manage to kill the Pack 40 so that was at least something. And my Sapere are now moving through here to uh, take p this position from him because if I have the hill here then I can maybe get some AT guns or something up here later on and utilize that to capture these three flags. That is another way that you can attack this map. I actually really like this map because there are a lot of ways that you can attack it. So in this case on the left, you know, I can push through the, the close cover and kill his or take this flag. Or I can push through the mid and use that area or we can use the right hill. It's, it's actually a really cool map. I like this map a lot. Anyway, T-34-76 takes out both the Panzer IV and the Turan. Uh, we have taken out another Panzer IV back here with my KV-1E off that vehicle. The off that vehicle had used up its strikes, so uh, that was an okay trade for me. Now the off map's going to come down here, but the SU-122 kind of just died because the Panther came in, and there is nothing I can do against that unless I bring the ISU-122 over. Now I had put my ISU-122 uh, on an order from the top side to the bot, I think, but I end up stopping it in the mid to deal with the tiger because the tiger is coming through here. Anyway, off map's going to land. It does end up killing the Stug, as you can see. And yeah, I was hoping to be able to follow up on that, but 
Alas, without, without the SU-122 and the Panther in position, I can't really charge like transports onto the off-map. Uh, I was just hoping that that had done at least a decent amount of damage. Hadn't done a single point of damage to any of the infantry, though. <laughs> it's funny we can see that. Anyway, PE-2 coming in with a bombing strike. I was looking to bomb out the Turant here. We managed to somewhat hit it. On the top side, Focke-Wolf. 189s forced back by the 25 mils and you see that like the AA in this case you know it's adequate it forces off the strikes in this case the 25 mils actually shooting down the Focke Wolf 189s doing what the 37 mil couldn't uh, but it is now 15 to 9 on the map and he's ticking a double tick 25 minutes into the game Mudlovis again coming in with the bazooka going to be finding an easy kill onto my T34 that I've left over there uh, oh yeah, the other thing that we, we lost throughout the game was the mortars. And those mortars are pretty crucial in taking decisive infantry engagements. You saw how much they really helped on the top side when I had three of them, when I was able to pin him down before I advanced. He has been doing that throughout the game now with his 149 mils that he's brought in at the start. So those have been really putting in work throughout this game. And you can see he's constantly targeting my AA. Uh, to kill them off. So, Sapoli, Straki DP coming in. The one good thing I did do in this game was utilize veterancy. Like having the commander with the leader, with the infantry, like exploiting my infantry advantage was something that I think I did okay. It was just everything else that was just awful um, that I just didn't do well. But I guess we could talk about a little bit what I could have done better. I think in hindsight, the the second Panzer Losh is a good ban. If you know we're just playing it out as it is, then it probably would have been better for me to invest in just more infantry on the top side, bring in the Straki DP as my close range infantry uh, with Sapere, so that I can PTRD the Torans early on rather than uh, rely on a T thirty four. That could have been a move. Uh, obviously making sure that I move my mortars after I fire them every time that is just basic stuff really uh, at this level um, not doing it cost me quite a lot uh, what else could we say uh, I don't know like maybe not investing into a side that I'm not going to push before I push into it so for example on this bottom side uh, I brought in this SU-122 but it kind of just sat here for most of the game and that's what 80 points just invested into nothing technically you could say it would be defensive but if I had 80 more points of infantry on the top side during this push then you know it solidifies that a lot sooner and then I can then put points into other places and you know, not spreading out too much I feel like as a like when you're playing Maverick or Vanguard in 1v1 you've really got to be a lot more decisive on what you want to do and I feel like openers is really like a weak point in my gameplay right now where I don't really have a plan necessarily as to how I'm going to win the game going in because I'm so used to team games particularly when I'm streaming to just be like casually playing for fun whereas when it gets a lot more competitive you really need to have a game plan you can't just like not care if you win or lose like I would normally do <laughs> like I usually just play for fun I don't really mind if I lose and um, yeah I think that's why my attitude is relatively good when it comes to a 1v1 and not really minding too much if I if I win or lose either uh, but taking the games more seriously particularly the league more seriously especially when I'm in a decent division <laughs> I, I definitely should do that more uh, I definitely should. I should practice more if I... Well, truth is, I don't really have time to practice, so I should probably go back down to Division 3. Uh, but anyway, Sniper picking off the unit there. This is just me not paying attention. It was also me placing my unit too far forwards. So I do it again there, but it's mostly because I'm rushing, probably, taking care of other parts of the map. But basically... Unless I'm going to cover the push, there is no point in placing the call-in that far up because if I'm not looking when the truck comes, then it's going to get killed, right? Of course. My SU-122, I think, missed the only shot it could have taken there. And then the Panther's going to just move into cover behind the building and it's going to leave my KV-1E vulnerable. 
I'm going to drop off map here again. I'm not too concerned if this dies because the off map's down, but there's only 10 seconds left on the map anyway. And uh, I'd already realised that this was lost a long time ago. Tiger takes out the T-34. 76. And, yeah, not much else to do. Just inefficient trades early on. Bazooka, once again. <laughs> the bane of my existence as well as the Tourette's and uh, yeah well played by a lot well played indeed uh, not really much else to say I think I covered most of it during that game uh, it comes down to kill death mostly uh, 1830 kills to 2800 losses pretty brutal early on my infantry play worked out really well it really did. I think I leveraged my infantry quality okay in this game and uh, aside the off map and mortars there definitely was uh, potential I feel in this game but losing so much stuff like my fighter out the gate went down the T-34 gets killed by the Turan 1 the 75mm 30.8 AT gun kills an SU-122 the BA-64 the M-42 then the double bazooka kill from the Mudloves like this, all of this stuff at the start is a huge amount of points in the early game. It really is. And it just takes me completely out of my tempo uh, going forwards. The early investment in off map from, or not off map, in the on map 147mm artillery was nice by a lot. I definitely kept the pressure on my AA. And then the Tiger cleaned house in the mid against the SU-122. I uh, did manage to kill off the panther that was on the ridge opposite with one of my 122s, which is basically what you need to do. You need to trade those ISU-122s with panthers and you kind of pay them pay them off. But my ISU-122 in the mid, I think, missed the tiger and then got killed, uh, which was unfortunate. <laughs> anyway, uh, that is that game. Yeah, pretty one-sided. Probably the most decisive game, I would say, apart from maybe there was one against Flix that I played that was a bit decisive, but I feel like this one was very decisive. A lot played very well, and uh, I guess really, really just wanted to to prove that he was better than me in this group, which I think he is anyway. <laughs> All right, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Okay,